interview and job search strategies at work. I'd like to tell you, I know I've talked in a couple past episodes uh, about, I want to be more specific now. Um, just want to talk to you about your strategies. And in order, let's just talk about getting a job at McDonald's. What does it take? Maybe I was like, oh yeah, I just walk in. That's true. Sure. Uh, probably it is the case. I don't know. I haven't worked there in a long, long time. But uh, I, I went to Indeed.com and I just typed in, uh, you know, McDonald's, right? And it says, uh, well, the, the position is team member and now hiring members at 10, 10 bucks an hour. Apply for the uh, details. They want crew, maintenance, shift managers, and department managers. So for the crew, um, on a McDonald's restaurant crew, you'll be a member of a tight-knit team working together to prepare meals, take food orders, keep the restaurant clean, and bring, smi uh, bring smiles to customers' faces with great service. And let's see. So what do they need here? Um, that's for the crew. That's your job description, what you're expected to do. This is a full-time position, and let's see. Well, if you're a manager, here's what a manager, they want a manager to be. So if you strive to be that, managers are team members working with the restaurant crew to ensure quality service, great food, and cleanliness. As a manager, you might keep team members on target to meet goals, plan for peak hours during shifts, and check in with customers to make sure everyone at McDonald's is happy and satisfied. It's time you work for someone who will give you the tools to learn. Um, okay. So here are the, as a crew, well, this is actually go back to the crew member. Um, you're responsible for as a crew member, greeting the customer with a smile. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Thanks for coming. You know, smile happy, right? Big smile. Taking accurate food orders. Um, that just means like that's a strategy that you you work on. You know, looking them in the eye and just you know making sure, well first make sure that you know what the products are because they're going to say number one with cheese or pickles or whatever. And you should know that. Like okay, what's the number one? Okay, I don't know that right. And so make sure that um, you know just uh, try to try to be as accurate as possible with the food order preparing all of McDonald's world famous food. So if you work in the back, that's what you're going to do. Put the burger, make the burger, uh, partner with crew members to meet target goals during your shift. So that, uh, with, I'm sorry, partnering with other crew and managers to meet target goals during your shift. That might be, if you're that, that basically what that means is, Hey, do you need help? Or hey, can I get that for you? Or just maybe see what other people need done and do it. Maybe you can, uh, maybe you can get that skill being there. Or who knows? Maybe you have that skill already, where you know what needs to be done, so you just do it. And definitely, management's going to see that real quick. And either they're going to give you more work, or they're going to appreciate it and say, "Oh, good job," you know, and give you the good feedback. Expect one or the other, right? That's really it right there. Um, your other function as a crew member is restaurant cleanliness. So you trash, pick it up on the floor, nice presentable area. And if you work in the back, say like you're a, um, you make the burgers. So sometimes you might have to go to the, to the freezer and get the burgers, maybe use some double quarter patties. Uh, maybe you're, when you come on shift, maybe you get there a couple minutes early, you know, and you look at, uh, because a lot of times what happens is your manager will tell you, okay, Hey, go on and get some, uh, get some quarter, uh, uh, quarter beef, right. Or whatever. And if you do it yourself where you, okay, I know what I need. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and get that before my shift starts, be prepared, fully stocked, right, at all times. So that's that's McDonald's, right? That's that's McDonald's. And it depends really where you work at, but for the most part, that's the general idea of McDonald's, getting hired and working there. 
10 bucks an hour, I think is what it is. Um, but restaurantjobs.mcdonalds.com is another website you can go to for that. Um, you just type in Google, work at McDonald's. Yeah. The other thing is, um, let's talk about how do you get some, you know, you want to work on an OS. Maybe the, the job calls for working on uh, Macintosh, Apple, right? Safari, OS. And you don't know that. You haven't worked with the email. You don't have a Mac, right? So there's a good website. If you just type in into the browser, um, the Google <laughs> OS Simulator Online. That's uh, O is in Oscar, S is in Sam simulator online just type that in google a couple of url come up one is a pretty good one um this one is called um chasm c-h-a-s-m-s dot com i think that's how you say chasms c-h-a-s-m-s dot com there you can um you can click on like mac os email iPhone, iOS 11, iPad, browser, Safari, Firefox. You click on it, and it, it'll tell you, it give you a visual. Okay, that's what that looks like. Well, you know, so you have an idea. You can click on stuff and click through certain features, how to set up um, Wi-Fi, you know, how to set up email, Mac Mail, Mac Mail 10. What do you click on, how to check your mail? It's pretty nice. The other thing is, this is for virtual desktops. For instance, it goes actually back to Windows 95. And that URL is um, virtualdesktop.org. So virtual, V-I-R-T-U-A-L, desktop.org. In that website, you can click on like um, Windows 95 or up to uh, Windows 2000, Windows XP Pro, they also have um, Mac OS X, that is the Tiger with Safari, Apple II. Just to give an idea of simulator. Like, you don't have a Mac or you don't have Windows. Well, you shouldn't have Windows, I guess, in this regard. Could, you know, if you're viewing it, if you don't have a Mac, then you have Windows. How else? You might have PCBST, Linux. That's a good uh, alternative version of, of uh, OS. Um, anyway. So in that regard, you got Windows XP, just general how to, how to do certain things, give you a good visual without doing anything on your computer. The other one, which is really cool, actually, it's called um, appsimulator.net, A-P-P simulator, S-I-M-U-L-A-T-O-R.net. That one is an awesome one. If you click on that, it has a Samsung Galaxy, the Apple Watch, the iPhone 9, um, the Apple Watch, I already said that actually, the HTC One, the Android Lollipop, Samsung Android 4. You click on it, and it's a simulator for that, uh, for that uh, phone. It's a phone simulator. You know, it's Apple or Android. You click on the top there. It's pretty cool. Different versions of the OS, Marshmallow whatever the latest one is, Lollipop, I think it is. I'm not sure. The other one is, um, let's see. Let's see here now. The other one is, hmm, gosh. The other one, like I said, the other one is uh, called uh, emulators.com, E-M-U-L-T, E-M-U-L-A-T-R-O, -O, uh, E-M-U-L-A-T-O-R-S.com. And that is emulators, really. That's pretty cool. Uh, different emulators for different uh, software, different OSs. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, the other one to teach, to learn, self-teach yourself, is to download uh, VirtualBox, V-I-R-T-U-A-L-B-O-X.com. 
VirtualBox, you can install your own version of Linux or Windows, your own OS on, on your computer without actually doing anything to your computer you have right now. So it's like it's, it's an OS inside an OS. And that'll give you some uh, training. Uh, you can do certain things to it, learn how to do it, learn how to install stuff. But you don't have to worry about damaging your computer because it's in, you know, and if, the good thing about that is you can take what they call snapshots. So for instance, you might install software on that virtual computer inside your computer. And before you do it, you can take a snapshot and it just says, okay, um, you, you know, what you don't say, you don't like that software that you installed. Well, you don't worry. So you just revert back to your previous snapshot. We revert back to prior to installing it. And then it's like nothing ever happened. That's, that's really the benefit of it. Right. And th now this is all free by the way. So there's a, there's another great website. It's called uh, distro list. I see distro, distro list. Distro list or distro, distro watch. Yeah, here we go. Distrowatch.com. D I S T R O W A T C H.com. Distrowatch.com. You click on, you go to there, right? And on the right hand side, it has all of these Linux versions. And um, I know when at first, maybe if you're a Windows person, like, oh, Linux, you know, you know, the, um, it's all command and typing and like you see on the, on the TV, but it's not. Ubuntu is a pretty good, pretty good one. Um, it's, you know, click, click, click. It's just like Windows, no different. But on the right-hand side, it has all these different distributions of Linux. People have made their own. People have taken Linux and changed some things. Um, and, th and this is a really good way to do it. You know, separate yourself from your competition. Go there. Open SUSE is a good one. Uh, Debian, uh, Element, uh, not, uh, Ubuntu Mint is a good one. Slackware, Xubuntu, FreeBSD. What is it? It's called uh, uh, Ubuntu Studio is a good one. Proxmock. Of course, Proxmock is, is a virtual emulator, but uh, a virtual environment, rather. And you can just go there, look at everything, look at what you can do with it, figure out certain things. And you're, you know, you're ready for your, for your help desk. You know, like I said in previous episodes, Active Directory is the number one skill uh, to get and to, to, to be a help desk admin, right? So let's do this. Let's go to google.com, right? And let's type in uh, help desk, help desk jobs. Okay, uh, and then date posted. We'll go past three days, let's say, in this regard. And left-hand side, you see like um, different jobs, right, whatnot. And you know, let's just let's click on one of them. Let's click on uh, let's click on just help desk support, help desk specialist, help desk technical support, help desk. Let's click that one. Okay. Support all cordon, all corporate hardware. So the job description is support all corporate hardware, software, and networking needs. That's very general. Like, okay. And, and, you know, when you first look at that, like, oh, wow, that's a lot, right? Oh, my gosh, there's so many. Because you're probably thinking, I don't know it. I don't, what if I don't know the network? What if I don't know their environment? Uh, I don't want to be looked at as not knowing, you know, I mean, yeah, you're going to not know anyway. You're not going to know everything. It doesn't, just doesn't work that way. You're not going to know the environment first day, not going to happen. Because if you did, if you did know the environment, you would be at a higher level than they would be. Therefore you would take a higher position. You'd be a sysadmin. So we like, okay, I know all that stuff. I just need the next one up. So don't, don't think of it that way. Uh, think of it like, how can I get in there? Uh, get a skill, get some knowledge, and then get out. You know, when when you go to a company, um, you know, take from take their knowledge, right? 
they're, they're giving it away for free. You know, I don't know if you know, you probably know, but a library has all these books and not a lot of folks go to the library and like, eh, okay, whatever, you know, there's, it's free, right? It's free. Treat a job the same way. When you go there, when you, when you learn, okay, oh, okay, that, that's the type of equipment they have, right? So when you, when you go, go home and learn on it and tr maybe teach yourself, it, you know, what is that equipment, right? You just want to be ahead of the game. You want to be ahead of everybody else. Just, just for, you know, it, you don't probably want to do this for 30 years or 20 years, but just enough to where you have a cushion. Just do it a little bit. Do it, you know, for like a year, basically. Not that job necessarily, but have this strategy intact when you when you're doing uh, when you have a job is learn more. Spend like another ten or twenty hours a week on just your job, learning more than your job requires for the next job. So when you have this job, get the next one or learn uh, learn what you need to know for the next job. And you know, re in reading this, right? I mean, there's tons of job or tons of different things that people say for jobs about you know support all corporate hardware software and networking needs that's really big don't get scared about it provide daily support to users in all systems hardware and software related issues um meaning like hey i can't connect to the internet why not right that's your job okay i don't know let me let me go over there and check it out maybe you do it remotely maybe you go there and oh, okay it's unplugged or or whatever, maybe the network connections unplugged, whatever it is. Um, MS Office product support, um, Excel, strong Excel skills, right? Macros, graph, etc. You, you don't have to know all. I mean, you don't have to know one hundred percent all that. Um, so don't just don't don't shy away from this job, right? That's what I'm saying. I guess that's my point. Read through the job and read. You know, take out what you can do already. That's really it right there. You have a job description in front of you, google.com, type your help desk jobs, whatever. You see the first job and apply to, you know, look at, go look at every single one. Why not? Why not look at every single one? Spend, spend, you know, I was, after all, you know, if you're only going to apply at one job, you're not, you're not going to get very good uh, turnover ratio for that. The chances are, you know, unless you have this super, super awesome skill, they're, they're not going to hire you. You know, you have to strengthen numbers. You know, apply at 100 places. Apply at a place that you're not even anywhere near, but you want to get there. And then leave out your leave out your address where you live. And so that way that they, you know, when they come, we call you or they email you, they don't look at your resume and say, oh, well, they don't want the job. You know, they're, they're too far. That's what they're thinking. Some of these recruiters, sometimes they don't even call you because they're like, oh, well, this job is in New York and this person lives in Florida. They're not going to want the job. So they don't even bother calling you. They just assume that you don't want the job. They don't even know. They have no idea. And so take out that and just put it blank. Put your email or phone uh, name, phone number, email done. Um, and just leave it like that. That at the top. And just apply. Just apply so many times. When you, uh, maybe like 100 maybe 99 a, a, a week. Try to go on like three or four interviews um, a month just so you can get your skills, you know, get those those skills going. And then, um, yeah, so awesome. All right, well, this concludes this podcast episode and uh, have a great day.